With the Timberwolves winning this one, it sets up a Western Conference Finals matchup where we are getting Luka versus Anthony Edwards. Initial Ooh. gut feelings about this playoff matchup. The 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 playoff matchup or the Luca versus Ant? You just talking about the playoff matchup. Huh? The playoff matchup. I got the Wolves winning for sure. Like I I think out of I listen. I'm not gonna say Wolves in five. I'm gonna say Wolves in six. I have I Wolves in six as well. I was I, I, video I just <laughs> recorded. I said the same thing. I was like I haven't deep dive. Like the game just ended 20 minutes ago. I got Wolves in six. That's just mm. gut feeling. I about to say that's just initial reaction. Just how I'm thinking about the way the wolves, where the wolves are playing, the way the um the Mavs are playing. Give me the Wolves in six because definitely feel like Luca is gonna get you at least two. I feel like, mm-hmm. but um, as far as that matchup, that matchup is gonna be interesting. Um, I don't think he's. He, I actually Anthony ever said it in like the post game. The post game he was like my matchup is Kyrie Irving, which is gonna be very very interesting. I love the fact that he's bro. I love the fact that he's a star player, the best player in the team. And he's taking on that challenge of guarding right. your best guard. Like he's gonna take on that that challenge. Like he even said, like, look, my I'm not a guy that's just gonna score. Like I made an impact in the third and fourth quarter because I guarded Jamal Murray and I shut him down. Like, that's what he said. So that's gonna be interesting from that aspect. Um, just initial thoughts about the matchup in general from the teams. Um it's going to be interesting to see how the Mavs deal with the size aspect of it because they do have two guys that are athletic, can jump, can, you know, rim protect a little bit, um, but not like huge bodies, I should say. They're more just kind of athletic rim protectors in a way. Um, mm-hmm. I'm curious to see how Luka deals with the defense, the overall defense and physicality of the Timberwolves. Um, obviously, he's he's better than Jamal Murray, so he's going to handle it better, I would say, because obviously Luka's of that caliber to where he's the type of guy where if, I can see him just still getting his number, still doing his thing, even though this Minnesota defense is doing well. Um, but they're going to be swarming. They're going to be all over the place. Um, they're going to be all over a guy like Kyrie Irving as well. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if people like like a P.J. Washington, you know what I mean, can step up and have those at least similar level performances that he did in the OK Oklahoma City series to where – if you're the Mavs, you need those guys to step up because I don't think that Luka and Kyrie alone are going to be able to beat this Timberwolves team who clearly, as you can see, play as a whole entire team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think that's going to be interesting. I want to see how that works. I want to see how the defense works. Or no, actually, I'm more curious about how the Mavs offense works against the Minnesota defense. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I, I think to me that's the biggest thing is can the Mavs actually get those other guys to continue stepping up and playing well because they're going to need to be an entire team, an entire unit to beat the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think it's going to be a good series. I I, I I feel six, but I think even if it doesn't go seven and it does go six, I think it's going to be a hard-fought six games either way. I think no matter how it shakes out, five, six, seven games, I think it's going to be hard-fought. Uh, the Mavericks are playing – phenomenal defense as well. Like I've been super impressed with what PJ is doing, what Derek Jones Jr. is doing, um, what Gafford and Lively did in this last series against the Thunder. Like they were huge. I think the the Timberwolves present a different type of challenge. Like they were able to stagger Gafford and Lively's minutes in this series and with the Thunder not having a backup big. And even when Chet was in, like they really could abuse the glass, and then obviously those lob passes at the dunker spot between the two mm. of them. Conversely now, like, you have to think about there were times in this game and there's going to be stints in this series where you might legitimately have Nas Reed, Towns, and Gobert all on the court at the same time, or even if it's just a combination of the two. Um, even, even, guys, even think about if it's no Gobert and you just have Cat and Nas Reed, you have two guys who can be – dominant to an extent on the inside, can crash the glass, can be physical in the paint, but they also can play off of the perimeter and take you off of the dribble. Right. So I don't think we've seen Gaffer or Lively have to get, you know, stretched out that continuously in a series. Obviously, the first round, we're going against the Zion, William, Liss, Pelicans team, and playing against Valanchunas. And then in this last one, they're playing against Chet, who can space the floor, but Younger, not as physical, um, and obviously on the other end, we're just so much easily able to dominate him on the glass, but that's been OKC's recipe the entire season. Mm -hmm. I think this Timberwolves matchup presents an interesting 
uh, you know, set up for them to have to be more versatile on the perimeter um, in ways we haven't seen from his postseason. Um, I think Lively matches up a little bit better just with his athleticism and how he was playing um, you know, so far in this playoffs, even going back to his time in college, just being able to step out onto the, on the perimeter and use his speed. But um, I think it'll be hard fought. But again, this, this Timberwolves defense is just so ridiculous, insane. And I think the size that they bring, like, it's hard. If you don't have Gafford and Lively on the floor at the same time, I don't think Maxi Kleba is going to be back in time. I think he's still hurt. So it's like then you leaves you with PJ having to guard one of the seven footers. Exactly. Present some problems. And then if you have to play Gafford and Lively at the same time, that hinders the offense to an extent because the spacing gets a lot of whack. So Jason Kidd has got a dilemma on his hands for sure. Um, mm-hmm. I'm very interested to see what he does. You know, obviously the, the way that he – guarded Shea this last series um, was really good. And I think he came up with a really good defensive game plan to pack the paint against him and, you know, made, made very conscious decisions on who he was going to let get their shots off for um, OKC. So I think he'll cook up something that is, is decent and it'll be a scrappy series. But ultimately, I just think personnel wise, it's going to be too much on Minnesota's end for Dallas to overcome. And especially with Luca being hobbled, like we've seen a couple of those, you know, Luca magic performances, but you can just tell he's not, he's not a hundred percent. No one is a hundred percent, but he's banged up for real. So I think just the combination of all that makes me really lean wolves um, in this one. Yeah, for sure. And it's going to be, like I said, the big, a big thing too, is the fact that he is hobbled going up against this physical, physical Minnesota defense, who's going to be able to throw different bodies at you in all early defenders. Um, obviously, Luca's still going to get his. He's still going to have his games, but <clears throat> it's going to be interesting to see how he handles that. Even like a guy like Kyrie, who hasn't been playing like lights out, mm-hmm. like we're just going to be interesting to see how he gets that going. It's just, I agree with you. I just think it's going to be interesting and tough matchup wise for the Mavs. But I mean, you can never count out. I mean, like, I wouldn't be surprised if Luca just goes off and it just has one of those series where it's just like, listen, I'm still. Listen, I was destroying Paul George, Kawhi, and all them when they were trying to throw up multiple bodies at me, good defenders at me. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes off. But in reality, just off the way these two teams are playing, I just lean the Minnesota side. I just like the way they're playing. I like their versatility. I like the way they match up against the Mavs. Um, I like how they can beat you multiple ways, as evident by this Game 7. So it's it's definitely going to be interesting, though. This series is going to be very, very entertaining to watch. Yeah, the other thing I'll say is I'm not – I'd be hard pressed to imagine that you get the type of offensive output that you got from both PJ Washington and Derek Jones Jr. for another series. Like that That's felt true. like that felt like they caught lightning in a bottle a little. PJ Washington bad. had some games where he was like he well he had twenty nine one game he had right. a high twenties another like he was hoping. Yeah, I, I think and, and look, I, I love to be proven wrong. Like it's not no knock against either of them. I just. I'm more confident that you could get that type of output from Nas Reed and Mike Conley and like the others on Minnesota versus if it's outside of Luka and Kyrie, like it just Tim Hardaway Jr. coming in and giving you a flamethrower, like the offense gets a little skeptical. Um, and obviously, again, a lot of that got carried by PJ in this Thunder series. Um, so we'll see if it, if it continues, but I, I definitely still have question marks there for, for where our offense is going to come from. I feel you.